but I understand you know, in, in terms of, well, you want to deal with a nice light topic. One of the things you were aware of as a human being, because we have the ability to look into the future is, we're all going to die. Mm. Okay, so do we stop now? No, we say in the meantime, what am I going to do? So I think we live with that. That is there. Yeah. Uh, and it's not easy. I think your notion is, do you really need to call it an absolute? Well, if you talk about numbers, That's absolute, right. yeah. the actual yeah. size number, yeah. Uh, uh, so you have, yeah, I think you're right. We start somehow say, look, I, got, I, I want to admit that, and I also want to look at the notion of percentages. Uh, not, ex not accept that it has to be that way, but to realize that it is that way. Now, what type of actions might we take? Understanding that we're probably, we're not going to be totally successful. But as a pragmatist, better is, is an improvement. There's a notion that, uh, in thinking that the best can be the enemy of the better. <coughs> we can only do our best, and it has to be our best, and it has to be the, the best thought. We can be paralyzed. But the idea of the better gets us to move and make improvement, which then we can spring forward and move from there. So I think, but isn't that's the counter great. to that, good is the enemy of great? Because things are mostly okay, people go, ah, I'm mostly okay. So they don't need to be great. Could be. That, great. The trouble with these darn sayings is whenever you get one, you get one on the other side. However, <laughs> let's do nice. how, 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 I, I think I think great's got some problems. If you say, if you, I'm, I'm afraid of people who just want to be great. You could say gooder, but it's just... Gooder? Yeah. Not so <laughs> yeah I, think, well, I think you go with the gooders. Uh, as, but the great is, um, they use that to sell a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't want to, and I, I think it's important that people will have an idea that they're really willing to work for and to really push and have a sense of excellence. Uh, so I want to incorporate that in my notion of better. I think you can, uh, it's just harder. But I think ultimately you can win more in the long run. So I think it's more of a pragmatic move. Okay, thank you. Good question. Why are we thinking in the terms of uh, being human beings? I mean, what is so important in the whole humanist factor that we are only taking our own perspective of human beings and not everything else in this universe? There are a hell of a lot more to the universe than human beings. It is, yes. So we, it's a, it seems to be a very narrow way of thinking. Can you, think, of, can you think outside the human perspective? I can't, but I don't know why we are still why an attempt is not even done to think outside the human perspective? Well, we can't. We can only think using human concepts and yeah. trying those on to no, sort out the world. we can't because there is some sort of a barrier. That it's a glass ceiling that we can't. I'm sure there must be a point of view somewhere which thinks beyond this whole universe based on... Uh, I mean, that's exactly what religion tells us. That yeah. human beings is the center of the universe and the God revolves around it. And I'm, I'm not saying we're the center. I'm just saying... This is what we got to work with. We're rather puny. I mean, my, my view of humanism, we're kind of puny within this whole perspective. Uh, however, we still can do some things. Let's pay, let's pay attention to those things. But I'm not saying it's all about us. In fact, uh, with, say, uh, this notion of objectivism, you know, we, there's, there's many other ways of looking at the world, but we understand those by using the human perspective. We constantly use what we've got to extend what we're working with. I think I, I think the point is well taken. I don't want it to be all about us. However, we have to realize it's at least somewhat about us because this is where we're starting. So let's, I think we perhaps can overcome ourselves by learning this is what we're working with. John Dewey brought an interesting point. He said there's a key issue in philosophy, which is people used to always talk about the problem of evil. Dewey said actually the problem is more the problem of good. And people, huh? The problem of evil was if God is good and God is great, why is there suffering? Type of thing. But Dewey said, actually, the problem is a problem of good. Human beings find something that's good for them, and they say, project it onto the whole universe. This is the summum bonum. And my point from Dewey's notion is, I agree. It's not all about us. Be careful of our notion of trying to project stuff that works for us onto the nature of the whole universe. So I, I think I'm agreeing that it's not all about us, but we work from our lights. We only have our own lights. We can make those lights better, but to act sometimes as if it's not our lights that we're seeing with gets us into, I think, hazardous territory. I hope I've been, yeah. Right. Yes? Right. Yeah. Uh, within the uh, humanist uh, paradigm, do you see any possibility for uh, any, any kind of ethical evolution? 
Very much so. I think our notion of, with, with an emphasis on the notion of thinking and understanding consequences of activities and understanding more the complex nature of the situations that we are in. Uh, well, I, I see this as evolutionary. If you look uh, in terms of jurisprudence, the sorts of laws that we're developing, I see improvements in those things. So I think there are those possibilities for improvement. Uh, it's not guaranteed. Um, there's a tendency for us to try to avoid ethical thinking, to try to somehow get whisked away to some absolute realm that's going to solve everything for us. But I think what the humanist perspective is saying is it's difficult but necessary. And we can make improvement in our thinking. But the, diff the complex thing is, even after thinking very hard about something, two people can still disagree. We want to say, gosh, we want to settle it once and for all. But the deeper agreement, maybe they understand each other more deeply. And they can have a little more tolerance in terms of aspects of their life. So I see, yeah, I, I think there are those possibilities. But it's work. And we tend not to do that. We tend either, on the one hand, to go cynical, can't think about that, or we go absolute. The humanist perspective is trying to say, can we think within contexts that involve cumulative growth and development with the notion that we live in an uncertain world? Tough stuff, but I think we can, I think we can work at it. So there's a question over here? Yes. Yeah, you said that we have a social reality that is intersubjective, which is something that's like new for me. Okay. But also, if you said we're evolving and we are built from the ground up, mm. and that like you know we're part of the universe and things, then I think you can have um, a non-humanist perspective because you know you're perceiving the world, but the world has shaped you, right? Sure. And so I think that um, it's not. I think that this guy is, is probably onto something. Okay. I I think the idea that I want to say is this. Uh, there's a very interesting book that I read. 35 years ago, called The Social Construction of Reality. And it was very rich. I mean, this is like, this is a book that opened me up to sociology. Uh, before, sociology was a study of boring people by even more boring people. Uh, uh, this really opened up uh, sociology to me. But the idea, is, uh, the idea was uh, the social world goes on within and without us. And just that phrase goes on within and without us. So we've internalized the world. But that world, if, even if we stop thinking of it, it's still going to go on within other people. So there was a richness there of how the social world works. The inner subjective is we find, we're constantly trying to find ways in which we agree upon things and trying to expand, extend that notion. In terms of ethical progress, um, Peter Singer talks about basically trying to uh, expand the circle, getting more and more and more people included in the realm of uh, we. Anybody see the movie uh, Boys Don't Cry? Wasn't that a rich movie? Yeah. That movie expanded the circle for me. I saw uh, the world from perspective of, of people that I don't have that much contact with. But to see what the world would look like from their perspective and to see the hum humanity and what they're doing. So I think there is a type of progress that way. Let me connect this with this idea. With the notion of progress, there, there used to be a notion that progress was something that was vertical. You can reach this top truth. I think the type of progress that I'm talking about is expanding the circle. More and more and more people are included in that circle. Every year in September, I participate in a ritual here in Toronto. Uh, it starts about the second week in September, goes for 10 days. Film the film festival. That expands the circle. I see people encountering life in ways that I ordinarily wouldn't see. I see how the world makes sense to those people and how they're trying to make sense of the world. They become included in my week. I think in certain ways, ethic, ethical improvement comes through reading literature, through seeing film, by talking with people, try, and traveling and seeing other people. These are the ways we can include more people. It includes the realm of the inner subjective. I like traveling because in many cases I don't know a language, but I can communicate with people with my eyes and gestures. And we make some live contact. And different places have special meaning because we've made live contact. 